In the first two parts of this series, I explored how adding additional context to a film can greatly enhance the viewing experience. And honestly, I thought I knew what I was doing. Martin Scorsese makes a picture, you go see his picture. You gotta be serious about making a picture. But a new piece of intriguing information was revealed to me during a podcast with Quentin Tarantino. Quentin was asked about the importance of John Luke Godard's films from the 1960s in relation to his career. Here's Quentin. In a weird way, Godard's homemade quality and then his thumbing his nose at cinema technique, but always finding some clever anti-version of technique. But it was the cleverness. So there was this voice to it. But as time went on, I actually realized that it was Pauline Kael's review of Band of Par, or AKA Band of Outsiders, that, that I responded to even more than the movies. Even more than the movies? More? Yes, I did like those Godard movies, and yes, they were very, very exciting. But frankly, it was Pauline Kael's appreciation of them that actually inspired me even more than the movies. The trusted voice fusing with career context and craft. This is a powerful combination. When the movie you connected with is amplified with the trusted voice, in Quentin's case, Pauline Kael, you get a potent reaction. For Quentin, it was his entire career. She was talking about the film, and she goes, it's as if a couple of movie-mad Frenchmen took a banal American crime novel and wrote down the poetry that they read between the lines. And when I read that, I literally thought, that's what I want to do. There are few feelings more powerful than a eureka moment of, oh, that's what I want to do. Maybe there's more to movies than just the experience of viewing. Film is in constant flux. It changes over time. Reading someone else's thoughts about a particular movie can change how you process it. Suddenly, a unique perspective has enhanced your initial reaction. To me, that's the power, the mysteriousness, the sheer magic of filmmaking. I've often wondered if the memory of a movie can be better than the actual movie, or perhaps as our understanding of life grows, films tend to change for us. I think what makes cinema to me, ultimately, it's something that for some reason stays with you, so that a few years later you could watch it again, or 10 years later you watch it again and it's different. In other words, there's more to learn mm -hmm. about yourself or about life. Mm -hmm. At first you may find that I'm affected by this film, the camera work is amazing, the actors are terrific, great editing and that sort of thing. But after a certain amount of time, after you get enough of that, like um, for example, um, Shoot the Piano Player, mm -hmm. uh, Truffaut, I thought that was the best. But after a while I realized it's Jules and Jim. It's got more depth, you can watch it repeatedly, and you can watch it different times in your life. And the film's the same, you change. Marty's right. The film's the same, you change. That's the magic of cinema. You can get pulled in so many directions with one movie. Or at least for me, that's the hope. The whole point of having extra context is to enhance your experience, change your attitude, alter your perspective, and create more variety in how you watch films. So why does this really matter? Who cares about context if the film is really good? Shouldn't a good movie speak for itself and stand on its own? Yeah, but what happens when a movie's seen out of its time? For me, 1951 was my present when I saw it. As someone born today, they'll see it with completely different eyes and a whole other frame of reference. Same film, same images. But in the case of a great film, the power, a timeless power that really can't be articulated, that power is there even when the context has completely changed. A great movie is a great movie regardless of the context you view it through. I'm starting to realize that watching a movie is only the beginning, the setup. What plays out after isn't necessarily up to you. A good movie articulates a question that might be on your mind too. And then you can ask yourself, Paul Schrader says a great thing about the end of a movie. A good movie begins as you're walking out of the theater. So, you know, a really good movie is like a bell and you ring it and it vibrates inside you after you see it, you know? And if you think about the great films that you've seen in your life, they do kind of vibrate like that. Certain movies have vibrated so much within me that I had to get closer to them. See, I've come to realize that I'm in it for more than just the movie. I want to be part of the community who made the film. I want to feel the life of the person who made it. I want to see them in the story. I want to reach in the screen and feel it. Well, not always. 
I really want to stress that I don't always approach movies this way. I don't always want to be moved. Sometimes I just want to hide in a familiar movie or escape the realities of life. But when I'm really engulfed in cinema, I want to reach in. That's the peak. I think about this a lot because there used to be a time when we didn't get to choose the movies we loved. They chose us. Youth. In 97, my dad took me and my brother to see Jurassic Park The Lost World in theaters. All I remember of the screening is being terrified by the loudness of the movie. I could barely watch the screen. Today, I watched The Lost World with excitement and joy that was likely imprinted on me during that early viewing when I was eight. A high hide, you know, you go up and you hide. Hi. The five, five deaths. deaths, he says. How many Sarahs do you think are on this island? Sarah! I now see the larger flaws of The Lost World, but at the same time, I don't. It's simply part of my movie watching DNA. The Lost World in this case, I've changed, but the movie hasn't. It's still The Lost World. The movies of your youth are what you look to. That's when you fell in love with movies in the first place. Those were the times when you were the purest watching movies. You'll never get that feeling back, but that's the spirit I'm chasing when I watch movies. This started with picking the right movie to watch in the 21st century or whatever I said this or there's so many ways to get there, as I've explained. But to me, the most important aspect of all of this is to be able to give yourself over to the movie. Pay attention to directors, writers, cinematographers, and build your own repertoire of trustworthy filmmakers. This sounds like more stress on the process, but in fact, it's the opposite. Once you've gathered your team, you can avoid the Rotten Tomatoes scores, the trailers, the late night appearances, the reviews, and just enjoy the film. And you know what? Every once in a while, a film comes along that gives you the same spark you felt when you were young. My hope with this theory of context in film that I've developed is that it'll help you get the most value out of the time you commit to watching movies. So, what movie should you watch? I'll leave that up to you. How to watch movies in the 21st century.